Okay, so we're taking what we were working on yesterday and we're gonna now transfer this to some word problems. And the reality is why we need to learn what we've been learning. You don't go through life giving equations with a bunch of letters in them and have to solve for a letter, right? That's not normal life. This problem though is normal life and it is, it's real. So it, again, in 2004, this guy Ernst Van Dyke won the wheelchair race of the Boston Marathon in 1.3 hours. It says about because you know how they do with races. They count it down to the minutes and the seconds and all of that. The race was about 26.2 miles. That's the distance people do for a marathon. What was his average speed? Use the formula D equals RT and round your answer. Okay, so let's write this down. What's the formula? Distance equals rate times time. Where else have you used that formula before? Who's seen it in science? Who's seen it in life? Who runs track? Okay, so let's go back to what we know about this guy. They gave us two numbers. They gave us his hours. He was at about 1.3 hours. And they gave us the distance of a marathon, which is about 26.2 miles. Let's look at this formula we have. Which two pieces of the formula do we have? What's the 1.3 hours? Time. That's the T. What's the 26.2 miles? What are we missing? We don't know. We don't know this. Notice how what I just did is like what yesterday. Solve D equals R times T for R. Except we just looked at a real world problem and found the piece we're missing is this one. And as I just heard people starting to say, what are we gonna have to do as our first step with the formula? Divide by T. And now our formula is going to read distance divided by time equals the rate. Do we have his distance? We do. We can write it in. 26.2 divided by the time, which is? Notice when I write this, I'm not paying any attention to the labels, but we'll come back to the labels when we get our answer. And that's going to equal the time. I'm sorry, the rate. <laughs> His rate is going to be miles per hour. I know that because we have miles and we have hours, and we're going to find his miles per hour. Right? So let's, I don't have calculators for you anymore because they are all all over the building for testing tomorrow. So I'll just calculate it. Yeah, I did something wrong. Clear. 26.2 divided by 1.3. That's wrong. No, that's right. 20.2 miles per hour. And that makes sense if you think about it because 26.2 miles in 1.3 hours, he did most of the course in an hour and had just a little bit of it to finish, right? So I'm gonna have you guys rewrite the same formula. Distance equals rate times time. And on 107 at the very bottom of the page, it says check it out. And I want you to see if you can come up with what's missing this time. Find the time and hours that it would take Van Dyke to travel the same distance for a marathon if his average speed was what? That's way faster than he actually went. Because he went 20 point something miles per hour. Now they're saying, what if he could do it in 18 miles per hour? 
Yeah. You're right. It would take him more time. That's what I was thinking. But what's we've got distance and rate and time. We've got his distance here. This time they're giving us his rate. What are we missing this time? Okay, so let's go back to our formula. What are we going to be dividing out this time? We're going to divide the R. We still know that our distance is still 26.2. What if his rate was 18? Is that what it can't was? Okay, can we rewrite those into this now that we've redone this? Now we want to know how long would it take him if that was the case. Well, we'd put 26.2 over what? 18. I will take the one calculator left in the room and do the calculation. 26.2 divided by 18. They're in wherever you're testing tomorrow. I had a whole bunch that I shared. And I know you can't see it very well. Come on, adjust. That didn't help. You guys can barely see that. It says 1.45, and the 5 goes on and on and on. So it would take him a little bit longer. His, his um, time would be 1.45 hours to complete it if he went a little bit slower. Do you see how this is related to yesterday, though? Yes. And why I think doing all that practice yesterday will lead to help on the word problems? You're only going to do four. They have a few pieces to them. OK, so make sure you're doing all the pieces. But the assignment today is continuing 2-5 on pages 109 to 110. You're going to do numbers 2, 8, 29, and 30. Yes, I'm aware they're mostly even. I'm also aware I have the only calculator in the room, but there are Chromebook calculators. You can also use your own calculators. It is four problems, and when you finish, if you are one of those people who raised your hand at the beginning and said, I think I might need a little bit more practice, you might choose to go do those other eight problems before this and then do the word problems after. I'll leave that to you. If you finish and you've got classmates who are still working, I want everybody to look at me. Which of those SAIL, S-A-I-L, is about making sure that we have a good environment for the people around us Inspiring to learn. Others. Inspiring others and? Achieving success. Solving problems. I'm also thinking living healthy. healthy. Brains don't learn in an environment that's too noisy. That's part of living healthy as well, right? Okay, so we can go get those tables put back together.